Let's start with your name. Where did your name come from? The name came from, well, the group name Cash is Biz came from um, me and two of my boys. We was hustling in high school and, you know, came like one of the times heading to school, you know, senior year, smoking on the way to class and counting the money or whatever. And then my man looked over to me and was like, yo, Cash is Business. And, you know, it was just like a street thing. You know what I'm saying? We ran around and just... It's like a street slogan that we used you know, the whole time. So it's a group of you guys. Yeah, it's a group of us. Now the members in the group um, is K. Floyd, he's a rapper. Uh, Innocence, who's an R&B singer, as well as she does, she spits a little bar. She got little bars too. Um, me, my name is Always Getting Cash or A. G. Cash, and uh, beat maker Smokey Hayes. Now there's two songwriters on the team um, that help occasionally on songs for the R&B artists, Nova and, and Jeffrey E. So that's kind of the group right now. There was a, another member, um, Cap Ness, but you know, he doing his own thing. So you know, God bless to him. So what's the actual, okay, so it's a group of you guys, but it's an actual, uh, so I should say it's a collective of you guys, but it, is it an actual group group? Yeah, it's an actual group like the, the like a trio. Or? Yeah, it's it's basically at this point, you know that I explained basically Cash's business the label, but Cash's biz is like the group on it. CIB, that's the group on it, and that and that's Innocence, the R and B singer, always getting cash. Me and um, K Floyd, the rapper, and uh, Smokey Hayes, the beat maker and producer. So is that four people? Yeah, it's four. It's like three three artists and a, and a producer. Okay. Yeah. And how'd y'all meet? Um, some of us, honestly, we met, uh, me and Kay Floyd, we met in the streets. We was, uh, we met uh, down in a place we call Hot Town, which is a place in Massachusetts, Murder Mass, that is, uh, Boston, as y'all would know it, because, you know, I know, unless it's about sports or maybe like acting or something, y'all don't really be hearing about us. So, you know, we're trying to break out with the music. But yeah, we, me and Kay Floyd met just in the streets, you know, and um, he knew my cousin, God rest his soul. Um, we was hustling, and my cousin, you know, 210 is what we call him. Um, my cousin 210 basically uh, introduced me to him when he was in a trap house or whatever. They was making beats, and he was like, yo, AG, come check these beats out. So checked it out. Everything was good, and then he, you know, my cousin walked me into meeting K. Floyd. So that's how me and K. Floyd met. It was just a street thing, money thing, you know, trap house thing, you know, and then we moved on up from that and we just kept doing music for years and years and years, just being friends. So that was how that happened. Now with Smokey Hayes, uh, our producer and beat maker, he used to play basketball back in the day. He was one of the nasty on the dribbles. He had a little shot, you know, drive to the layup, but you know, I don't really know what happened with the whole ball thing, but you know he was making beats under the scene, but he just wasn't telling nobody. So I'm playing ball with him for years or whatever because I used to play on my high school team. So we playing ball, we playing ball, whatever, whatever. And then um, years later, he stopped playing ball, and you know I moved on. You know I went back to Boston because I wasn't in Hyannis no more, which is Hot Town. Um, I wasn't out there no more, so I was back in Boston. So we had kind of lost touch got back together years later and he was like, yo, yo, I'm, you know, I'm making beats now. I see you doing your thing, you know what I'm saying? You, I see you out here with these music videos and mixtapes and DVDs and, you know, you're always doing shows and you're opening up for people. So I see you out here, but, you know, I'm hearing some of them sound click beats or I'm hearing some of those, you know, industry beats. And he's like, man, you need that own original flavor that sound like you. So... You know, he started sending me beats, sending me beats. So I'm like, yeah, man, if you if you real about yours, you know, send me 10 beats. So he sent me like 20 beats. And then he sent me another 10 and another 10. So I'm like, all right, he's just going through his archive. He just giving me everything that he's been me. So I'm like, all right, use this sample. Use that sample. I want you to use the God of War sample. I want you to use the one is the loneliest number sample. And he just starts coming back with like, Kanye West and beginning the Rockefeller dipset days. So he starts coming with that kind of sound. So I'm like, all right, well, let me see if you can make some strip club, you know, ass popping music, whatever, you know, that type of party vibe, club vibe. He starts sending me those. We start making some hits. Then I'm like, all right, well, I need some street shit, some trap shit. Let me see if you can make that. 
you know, and basically he just kept coming through and coming through and coming through. And we had already had our previous relationship. So I signed him to my to my squad and was like, you know, everything will be in house with you. And I only work with one other producer. His name is B Money from Quick Money Entertainment. He from Detroit um, and DJ Hyella. They were um, they they both around um, Massachusetts and Detroit. So I was messing with them previously once in a while, but they were too busy. So Smokey just became the main producer for our squad. So. We started making beats, me and him. It was just a me and him relationship before he even got to meet the squad. Now with um, Innocence, that's the R&B singer, Light Skin Tall, um, she had used to play basketball too in high school, and uh, but she went to a different high school. So I will, I've only seen her around the courts or whatever. And then, you know, as we got older, I seen her at the parties, and then one day she was like, yo, you know, because I had known her for like 10 years, just, you know, living in the same, same area, you know, just knowing who she know. So, you know, we link. And then after uh, linking up for a while, uh, studio sessions, beat sessions, her learning the piano, doing all types of stuff, it just, that natural bond. So I was like, okay, well, you'll be the voice. He'll be the beats. K. Floyd and myself will be the, be the rhymes. But there was another member, uh, Cap Ness, who's... Um, like I said, he's doing his own thing, so you know he's no longer a part of the group. But you know, because there's a lot of music and a lot of stuff that kind of came out in the last few months or whatever. You know, that had me and a cat named Cap Ness. You know, he's doing his own thing with Avant Records. You know, shout out and God bless to them. Um, but we met when he was a part of the group. We met at a college called Bay State College, and um, it was just on some music shit for recording arts. So I was learning how to be an audio engineer and you know, learning how to build studios and wire up studios, you know how that go. So it must have been like, it was like a two year, it was like a two year program. So uh, for associate's degrees or whatever, and they had little dorms or whatever. So he lived around the hood, around the area. So I was going to school out there. So we had met, you know, a lot of stuff was going on with his family at the time, you know, bad stuff, jail stuff, stuff like that. So he wasn't really rapping no more, but he was still spitting bars. So how we met was, orientation day there was probably like I don't know like maybe like three four hundred kids there whatever and uh, you know I'm talking we all introduced yeah hey my name is da 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 you know how that go um, freshman year or whatever so you know like anything else you know we, you, <laughs> niggas just beating on the beating on the table beatboxing and you know a cypher breakout you know so everybody who do music that was the time so to this day if you on YouTube you look up a uh, Bay State kid rapping. That's that's what the person at the time who just randomly filmed it and put it up there. He, um, you'll see what I'm talking about. You just see me. You'll see me kind of rapping. It's like it's old because I ain't even have no hair. You know what I'm saying? I had no braids, no nothing, none of that. Um, so it was years and years and years ago, like maybe like eight eight to ten years ago. I knew, I knew him or whatever. So um, basically, I was spitting. He was spitting. That my boy uh, Darren, who was just there, and another cat that I was cool with named Rob, we had all met each other. We were like, you know, the squad or whatever. And my nigga E-Man from Providence, shout out to him. Um, we all had met and we were all just like freestyling and everybody, everybody from the school was like, oh, everyone trying to get involved. You know, we doing music, everybody trying to get involved. So Ness was spitting, Cap Ness was spitting, and then I basically didn't even know him and I just kind of came in and cut him off and just started spitting and, you know, I had everybody going crazy, you know, and um, it was it was a good day, you know, and that that's how I met Ness. So it was either some street shit or some school shit, some music shit, some basketball shit, just known around the way, you know what I mean? But we all probably have known each other for maybe like 10, maybe 12 or 13 years or more. And then there's a, uh, there's a, a girl named um, Shells, uh, she does all our filming and editing and photography and dance choreography for the girls who perform on stage at the time. So I wanted to shout her out. She went to high school with me. And um, she was cool with the squad, too. And she had dated a few other people that I knew that I was cool with. So she just became, you know, she went to the TV station, the local access station or whatever, and she learned how to work Canon cameras and Nikons and Adobe and Photoshop and along with me, myself, um, with her for years so that's how I met her she does all the work so that's basically 
the internal as well as the group. You know, so the group again is uh, K. Floyd, always getting cash and innocence, and beatmaker Smokey Hayes. So that's the group, and then the internal stuff amongst the label. Shells does the film and photography, and Jeffrey E. and Nova have been doing some songwriting, you know, under the label. Now, where are you from? I'm from Hyannis, Massachusetts, but we call it Hightown, Massachusetts. Y'all better know it as a, it's like a hour away from Boston, but um, back and forth between Hyannis and Boston, Massachusetts. And what's your opinion of the state of rap music right now in Massachusetts? Uh, right now, I think it's more like um, <laughs> like a self-conscious uh, type of thing. And, you know, I think everybody's stuck in 2006 and 2008 and, you know, like old New York flows, you know. Not that that's, not that that's bad because that's actually what we came up on, but I just think it hasn't evolved and you know there's a lot of young cats coming up but i just think commercially there's nobody um you know except for what benzino and bobby brown you know to keep it a hundred i mean smoke bulger and lou armstrong those are a few names uh they, they they're pretty in terminology and uh sam adams but those are like you know uh self-conscious type of you know only about bars rapper but there's no like there's no Drake of Massachusetts. There's no... Joyner Lucas is coming up. He's from Worcester, which is a part of Massachusetts, which is part of the same area code I'm from, from in front of 508. Um, but then again, you know, he's a self-conscious bars, you know, all the time. And, you know, we're about that too, but, you know, we're trying to, we, you know, we, we're trying to be the, the Drake of our city or the, the, the Wayne of our city or, you know, the Jay-Z of our city. You know what I'm saying? Like, something like that. Now, give me a tour of, how do you pronounce it? Hightown. Hightown? No, that's not the real name. What's the real Hyenas. name? Hyenas. Hyenas? Hyenas. Hyenas. Yeah. All right. Give me a tour of the city of Hyenas. Uh, let's start with the food. Favorite food spot in the city? Um, it's going to be Golden Fountain or it's going to be, uh, call it OG Bobby Johnson, but it's called Original Seafood like a seafood spot and it's like real big on the seafood out there Chinese food out there really really good on those types of food hot town more of like a, uh, it's a it's a tourist place it's a tourist like a lot of people go to it for, for the for the beaches there's a lot of beaches and water and you know tourist attractions type of thing but you know behind the closed doors it's like a, a <laughs> just not a good place to live <laughs> it's called high town because of the drugs everybody you know getting high so the dope epidemic is kind of crazy out there right now. Um, you know, overdoses and deaths on heroin is like, uh, like 10 a month or, or 10 every two months or something like that. It's crazy. So it's like, you know, it's some, uh, uh, what was a tourist attraction became like a, a trap spot completely. <laughs> Yeah. Now, what type of food are those places? I mean, one was seafood. Was the other seafood? Uh, the Chinese other one was or? Chinese. Okay. Chinese food. Which, which one was is, the Chinese? Uh, Golden Fountain. Okay. Which is banging if you like uh, crab rangoons and, you know, fried rice. And what do you order from each? Um, if I'm going uh, if I'm going to uh, original seafood, then I'm, you know, I'm getting the fish sandwich or I'm getting the seafood sampler or something. Where it's giving you everything, you know, taste of everything, fried clams, fried shrimp, fried scallops, whatever. And um, if I go over to Golden Fountain, then I'm going to get some crab rag and, you know, spare ribs or whatever. You know, that paid in full swag with the Moet. <laughs> Is there a nightlife out there? Strip clubs, regular clubs? Okay, well, there's a strip club that's terrible that I, I wouldn't go to. It ain't nothing like Atlanta for sure. I'm going to tell you that. No, stay away from that. Uh, nightclubs, yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a spot called... Um, Puffer Bellies, and then there's another spot called Embargo, and it's another spot called The Clatter, and um, just trying to think of all the performance spots and hip hop spots or whatever that you're gonna go to when you're out there. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. I, there might be one or two other ones that I'm not thinking of, but the nightlife is like you know we used to we used to be able to club until three four in the morning, and then you know, like anything else, you know, start fighting stabbing shootings and then now it's just like there's a curfew on a town at one o'clock 
So it shut down at one. Everything's done by one out there. Cops is out there heavy by one. You're not going out there without getting pulled over, car searched, arrested for some some nonsense. Like, <laughs> so it's just, yeah. Now we talked about the food. We talked about the nightlife a little bit. Anything else you recommend someone first time visiting High Town go see, do, or visit while um, they're in the city? While they're in the city, go to definitely go to Craigville Beach. Um, that's definitely a beach you want to go and be. And then there's um, the West Dennis Beach. You want to go out there for sure. Um, the hotels you probably want to be in uh, is the Cove, uh, the Hampton. You know, of course. Uh, what's the other ones? Like Cuddles and Bubbles. That's another one. Or the International Inn they call it. Uh, you want to go up Main Street, which is in the middle of Hyannis. That's like all the restaurants and bars and stuff like that because I, I don't really do the bar life you know that's not really me nightclubs yeah but the bars and stuff no but um you, you probably want to go down main street and go to craigville beach and west dennis beach those food spots you don't want to try uh there's like ferries or whatever that leads you over to another island or whatever you know you probably want to want to check that out i don't really know the names of it but because i don't get into really all that i'm never really there but you know that the crew's there, you know. So I'm 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 always everywhere, you know. Atlanta, Boston, New York, L.A. You know. Then I'm back in High Town just to make music with them, recording this into the studios. There's a local access TV station. You probably want to check off a uh, Shad Hole Road. Um. Really trying to think. There's not really much, you know. You you really go to Boston to do everything. You know what I'm saying? Or you go to uh, the the nearest city, which is uh. Uh, Providence, Rhode Island. So you probably go to Rhode Island for all the strip clubs, nightclubs, casinos, and then you go to Boston for all the like, you know, well, or Cambridge right outside of Boston. You go to, you know, all the nightclubs and bars and stuff like that. And then, you know, on High Town, it's just one of those spots that's, that's kind of a little bit away from the city, but, you know, it used to be fly, but not no more. <laughs> it's not somewhere it's a daytime place you know nightlife I'll, I don't really recommend too much for the nightlife how far is Providence uh, probably like 40 minutes probably like 40 minutes 35 40 minutes um, depending on how far you're driving from there what about the lingo what are some terms or some phrases one might hear in the city of high town right about now <laughs> um, you know see it's like uh let me see, like, uh, if any, maybe there isn't. Maybe I, I can't really think of any right now, um, because when we're out there, it's like you know we're not unless we're doing our music, we're not really involved with, you know, a lot of people because there's a lot of dead end people. Uh, there's a lot of herbs out there. I don't know if you heard of that word. <laughs> Everyone calls people um, people who ain't doing shit with like they call them herbs, or uh, um, what's the the word man I was laughing the other day I can't think of it right now you know we're gonna keep it moving are there any special events in high town that you recommend someone come to the city specifically for like for example in New Orleans Mardi Gras is like a week-long celebration out there anything in high town you recommend or okay not directly in high town but there's a spot like it's like 10 20 minutes away um, you go over a bridge and then you know it's like 10, 20 minutes away past that. Um, every summer they do the Cape Verdean festivals. And uh, that that's one thing I could talk about. Uh, the Cape Verdean culture is a big thing. Um, Y'all really don't know what that is. You probably wouldn't know what that is, but if you look it up and see the women, you that's one of the things you're gonna wanna do. Um, it's off the coast of Africa. And basically the island people had moved down to New England Massachusetts being like 90% of the population. So there's like foods like linguisa and jag and uh, munchoop and kale soup and stuff like that, that, you know, the foods are real, like rural, f rural foods, you know what I'm saying? And it's, uh, you know, the, the language is called, um, uh, it's, it's, it's like a form of Creole, um, you know, to be Cabo Verde. So that, that's, that's one of the cultures and uh, races out there. And then what's big in Hightown and, you know, all of that area of Massachusetts and that whole 
city and that whole place is uh, the the Wampanoag Wampanoag tribe, um, which uh, there's a lot of natives out there. So I mean, when it comes to like women, like it's straight, <laughs> it's straight. You know, it'd be good. You you'd want to go out there for the beaches and and the food and maybe some stuff like that. But I yeah, keep away from the from the rest of it. But events, yeah, the Cape Verdean Festival is a big one. Uh, July fourth fireworks like a lot of summertime stuff you know in the wintertime is dead unless like you know unless they bring in like French Montana down or like you know Migos or something like that unless you're unless you're bringing like an act down people the people don't really come out no more because of the curfew that got set because of all the fighting and the violence and the shooting stabbings and all the stuff after the club so nowadays like back in the day it used to be like you know like some hustle and flow swag you know, you like go to the club, then you park on lot pimp for maybe like two, three hours, four hours. Then you end up at like a breakfast spot and then, you know, the after party and that that don't really go on no more. Because, like I said, the curfew and everything that's going on. Let's take it back a little bit. Mm. What type of student were you in school? Hmm. When I was a student in elementary, I was a class clown for the most part. When I was a student in middle school, um, I was getting into a faster life based off of, you know, some of my family and the friends I was around and, you know, just the influences that I had, like <laughs> a lot of a lot of the cousins and, you know, brother and, you know, all my influences, you know, you know, were either musicians or drug dealers. So um, for me, it was it was me following that path, kind of one foot in music, one foot in the streets. You know what I'm saying? So when it came to school, uh, I probably not barely passed like D's and F's, but like, you know, C's, like low C's, you know, you know, mid B's or whatever on a good day. Uh, and that was just because school was so secondary for me. Learning wasn't. Just um, school was because I was always either I'm, I'm writing music, so I'm getting, you know, there's a few times I've got in school suspension or suspension just for writing rhymes all day through the class, like not paying attention to anything. They think I'm taking notes and I'm over here kicking rhymes with the headphones in my ear under an afro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, when it got to things changed a little when I got to college, but I was still in the streets and I'm over here slanging. So, you know, I'm going back and forth with that. Everyone's getting locked up around me, but I'm like you know, acting like everything is good. I'm trying to keep a regular job. I'm trying to please mom, you know what I'm saying? And then then I get caught up, you know what I'm saying? Basically almost kind of like kicked out. I had to like move out, you know what I'm saying? Like I didn't have to, but I had to, you know what I'm saying? Because it was just, I wasn't quitting the lifestyle that I was living, you know, and I was sick of lying, you know what I'm saying? So I just stayed in the streets. And, uh, you know, I, I, I passed all all of them up to high school and then I got my first college degree and then I actually was going to stop school and then uh, I went to Morehouse College out here in Atlanta and uh, I got my music composition degree, my bachelor's, so I know how to read and write music, I know how to play the piano. Um, I can't sing for nothing, <laughs> me and my homegirl was just talking about that. but. Um, I can't sing for nothing, but, you know, I tried that too, you know, just to learn the ins and outs of it. But uh, all around composer, though, you know, so that's basically my matriculation, uh, um, my education. I've had um, associates in bachelor's degrees in music. Now, what's your opinion on college? Because some people say go to college. Some people say you might not need college. Some people mm. have dropped out of college and have done very well for yeah. themselves. Some people have uh, completed college, gotten a degree, and aren't doing anything. Mm. Uh, they've got a degree in. Yeah. Um, and then others may go to a trade school or that See, sort I of thing. What, what's your opinion on that? Someone watching this, thinking about enrolling into college. Okay, well, I think as the young youth, I think if you're going to go to school to not do, you know, something that's foretold for you, to not put yourself in a predicament where you're doing something, you're going to school, because a lot of those people that get degrees and then don't ever end up using them or, you know, 
dropping out is like it could be a financial thing it could be a you know maybe that's just not them thing they don't like keeping continuance but I think if you do go to college which I think you should but it's not needed you know but if you do do it do what you're born to do and what you love to do what you'll wake up to do every single day and be happy with a smile so you can get up and keep grinding and keep doing it because that's what I did like I knew music you know everyone says music is the high road you know what I'm saying? Because there's a million people, there's six million people probably trying to do it all at the same time. Everybody trying to do it at the same time. So, you know, it's like a dead-end job. You know, doing music is like a lost hope for women, for, for, for family members. There's no security in that, not like being a doctor or a lawyer or whatever. But it's something I love to do, and it's progressing, and I'm making money slowly off of it, you know, in a way to pay for bills or pay for trips and to do stuff like this. You know what I'm saying? So it's working enough to do that and um, you know I would say just to do what you love you know if you're gonna do it definitely to do it but if you don't it's cool you know you can make money and, and, and you know elevate and evolve you know without it but I just think nowadays when if you're trying to live a corporate life you need you need to go to college you know there's there's, there's nothing no ands and some buts about it you're trying to do medical it just depends on what you want to do you know but you don't have to you don't have to have a business degree to be a salesman you know what I'm saying? So I'm kind of like iffy on it. You know, I think nowadays you're going to, like they said, the, the, the inflation of what you pay, you know, that's the one thing. Try to stay away from loans. Try to stay away from loans. Do scholarships. Raise the money up. Do whatever. But don't, I don't think you should put yourself in debt. You know what I'm saying? We all have, I mean, I have to a certain extent, you know what I'm saying, that I'm climbing out of now. But I would just say that try to stay away from the loan side of it if you do do it and do what you love to do so that's easy paying that back you know if you could go back in time would you have gone and and done the college thing like you have done i definitely would because for me college was saving my life so i didn't drown in all reality like i didn't need it but it just being around a bunch of people like the people i'm around are real negative you know, they're like one track minded, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, getting money and, and, and slang and it's really all people are talking about doing, you know, oh, look, what's up with this girl or, you know, or the, you know, wasting time, you know, when you look up, you know, and then life's over and like what you got to show for them. What, what are people going to remember you by that? That's not the type of people that live in Massachusetts, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of. There's a lot of like ain't shit niggas out there and ain't shit women out there. So, you know, also so. Um, if if I could go back, I'd probably do the same thing, but I probably would have left the streets alone a little faster and put more faith into the music and, and, and to what I was believing in, you know, and not just my group, because I was doing that with my group 24-7 regardless, you know what I'm saying, but, and, and to what we stood for, you know, respect-wise, but as far as, like, anything else, um, it saved me because I was selling drugs, man, you know, and, and shooting, shooting at people and, you know, doing all types of crazy things that, like, you know, I almost was locked up a few times, gotten a few raids and made it out. And it was like, I'll never forget, like, you know, the raid that happens maybe like two, three weeks before I'm a freshman at Morehouse. You know, for me, that was like, all right, well, I'm like 21 now. It's kind of it. You know, and I kept doing it. Every time I was going home, going home, I was like going to school and then turn around and hustling, going to school, turn around, hustling. So I'm going to school, turn around, hustling. Like I was trying to change, but it just kept pulling me. And eventually it got me completely out of it because I, I seen there was a way to make six figures, you know, without having to be on the block, you know. And so I, I probably wouldn't change anything um, because I'd probably be dead or in jail if not, you know, to keep it 100. Jobs you had growing up, if any? <laughs> uh, yeah, my mother always screaming to get a nine to five young. <laughs> my mother's always been screaming that. But, you know, I just being a regular nigga wasn't me. You know, not not no disrespect to anybody out there because it takes a, a level of obedience and, um, you know, a, a certain focus to be able to handle that routine so that life keeps moving on. So there is a a very high level of importance to that. But for me, that just wasn't enough. 
So, you know, every time I got a nine to five, it wouldn't last too long, you know. And it wasn't because I wasn't on time or I didn't put in the work effort. Work effort. I'm the type. I'm the type where, you know, you give me a job, I'm gonna bust it out. It's done. I need to know what to do next. And if you can't tell me, then I'm just not gonna do anything at all because that's not what you're paying me for. So, so uh, nine to fives. I probably worked like a landscaping job once, um, like a tree company once. Uh, worked in a few studios. Uh, worked at a. a local access TV station, filming and editing for the station, and, um, you know, going out and filming the shows, the hip-hop events and stuff like that, and, you know, and then getting eventually paid for my own music, but uh, coming up, probably only a few. There was, like, a video store I might have worked at one time or something, but it was everything was, like, a few months, and it was, like, a lot of times, to keep it a hundred, it was really just to please my family or other people because they seen me drowning. You know, but the things they were trying to save me with, I wasn't interested in. So a nine to five just was never me. You quit or got fired from these jobs? I quit. I quit. Okay, one of them, one of them, I seen that they were going to fire me and I quit. And that's because I knew that they knew I was doing something while I was at work, which I shouldn't have been, not to get too deep with it because that's a whole nother situation. But they kind of knew what I was doing. So before they could catch me, I like, oh, I'm quitting. And then another job, it was like, all right, I, I work this for the summer. Like, I'm going back to school. Like, um, I'm not feeling this. I'm good. But I'd work the whole time and grind the whole time and be a good worker. And they'd always want me to come back. But I'm like, this ain't for me. Or, you know, it just wasn't paying me enough money. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just wasn't enough money to put in to put in like 40, 50 hours a week and only end up with $1,000 at the end of the week or 800 or 700 or 500, whatever it was after taxes just was never enough for me. Like, I don't know. Any crazy, any crazy stories dealing with any of those jobs? Um, <laughs> yeah, probably girlfriends showing up all mad or girls, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, I swear one time I was at the mall like, you know, and I was working and I had went on break and I went to the mall and then, yo, I had, I had like a, a Chevy Oldsmobile at the time, old school, like the same car in training day, but it was candy apple red and it didn't have no hydraulics in it, but it was the same thing other than that, like the, the Denzel Washington went in uh, the training day movie and I had, I had that car and I just got it painted like candy apple red and had the, 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 gold flake in it like pff, shimmering like a diamond like a diamond <laughs> but um yeah man yo I, I went into the mall I'll never forget it and then I came out and my whole side of my whip was scraped up like it looked like someone backed up and scraped their whole whip into my car and just took off or someone came over there with a crowbar some angry girl came over there with a crowbar like just heated at me because I wouldn't date him or something like that but that's probably the craziest thing that's ever happened. Um, police came looking at, looking for me for a few jobs, and then um, you know, but it got cleared up. I didn't get fired or nothing like that, but it just got cleared up because I wasn't there, or whatever. But nothing out the the ordinary, other than that, no. What'd you do about that scrape? Did you get it fixed? Yeah, I just repainted the car, but then I sold it because I'm like, well, obviously this is gonna keep happening. So, you know, after a while, then I was like, let me. I started looking for beamers and all that type of stuff. So I'm like, let me just switch up the swag. What's the worst thing you put your parents through? Um, probably, probably when, um, after my mom kicked me out. Well, it wasn't like a kick me out situation. It was like I had to leave situation. After that, just the not being able to reassure them that I'd ever leave the streets alone. Um, and that I had a hot temper. So the worst probably thing is, is like, I'm fighting everybody left and right. Um, <laughs> I think the one time they heard about a story where me and, me and my people jumped out on them. This, this kid that, you know, tried to pull moves on me, um, you know, I, we jumped out on him, and you know, they, it was he was in the newspaper for getting beat down on you know, some baseball bats or whatever. And I just remember the police, like you know, and the stories looking around, and you know, that kind of led into someone telling on me, and then me being like 
at a gas station and, you know, I was going to pick up my people and they couldn't accuse me of that. So they locked me up for, you know, some weed I had on me at the time. But it was like it was enough to, like, try to hit me with distribution or whatever. But, you know, I was in the paper and then my mom was like, you know, oh, my God, because it was like the paper's going to her job and she does hair and stuff. So she's a hairdresser. So she know everybody. You know what I'm saying? So it's like and my dad, my pops, he paint cars. So, you know, they both have these jobs where they're like low waging sometimes up but low but they know the community around the way so that's probably the worst thing i put them through um one situation leading into another situation <laughs> which you know i had basically promised my mother i wasn't dealing with anything you know even though it wasn't the harder stuff so that's probably yeah the worst situation i probably put them through what's your message to the youth my message to the youth is to learn how to love the world, you know, and to not let trends set you for you to set them. I think if I had if I had any mentor coming up, the fast way is not the right way. And it's not the easy way. Whoever told you the underworld was easy, they lied to you. They lied to you. You know, stay in school, you know, love your parents. And and to all the young brothers, man, stop looking for hoes, bro. You know what I'm saying? Look for a good woman. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that'll hold you down. And, and you know, women stop having kids with weak baby fathers, yo, and raising, and, and that won't be around for the kids, man. You know, we need to be in our kids' lives because that's the only way. The kids are our only way to keep this world going or we're just going to crash and burn. So that that would probably be my message to the youth is to make sure you love and love hard when you do. You know, and the, the fast life ain't the way. Is there a meaning behind your hair? Um, I'm a native, so, um, you know, we always, our hair, I guess, not all, not all natives do, but um, in my culture, you know, it's common to have long hair. So usually it's one, one long braid, like a native braid, you know, uh, squanto. <laughs> Or a girl Pocahontas, you know what I mean, type swag. But uh, I just, you know, in Cape Verde and, you know, braids, cornrows, you know. I do the braids too, box braids or two, whatever, whatever. I just, I've always had long hair. Cut it, go right back to it. My hair grow too fast. So if I cut my hair, like low like yours right now, psh, my hair would be probably an afro in like two weeks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's just like I always said there was no point. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be an old man with a long white. Shaolin type joint. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What's your opinion of guys rocking fake braids? Okay, um... I've seen fake dreads, too. Man, you know... Okay, not to discredit nobody, right? Because I can think of three people in the industry, and I can think of, like, a hundred people I know. Um, straight. Uh, thug gay like I've seen it all uh, so um, I don't think <laughs> if you're a girl and you put in fake it in your head no, I'm talking about guys I don't even think that's okay, okay. but with yeah. guys to put fake hair in their head bro like if you can't grow your hair that long I feel like you wasn't supposed to do it you know this the girly notions I think that's one thing with hair and and, and your clothing and, and, and the, the way your mannerisms, I just think we need to get back to being men in hip hop. Not not that, you know, I guess being Metro is a bad thing, but you know, still be smooth and fly, but you know, back to that 90s swag, you know, still gotta get that masculinity in it because we're acting in hip hop, I feel like like women, we're catering towards men are getting, it's like all the stylists, are directed by women, you know, the, the artists are styled by women and, you know, they're direct influences by women. And I just think that it shouldn't be like that. You know, I think we were men for a reason, you know. You know, if that if that's your if that's your swag though, I'm not against it. Let me say that. I'm not against it at all. If that's you, it looks good on you. <laughs> but I, I don't know about, you know, I wouldn't do it. No. I wouldn't do that. Hell no. Do you ever feel 
discrimination because of your hair? Um, no, nah, I, I haven't. Um, I've actually got a lot of love from women. <laughs> so if anything, it's more like a, I guess, a up, you know, because the first thing, uh, <laughs> you know, it's just like when you watch them old 90s movies, you know, you must got Indian in your family, you know what I'm saying? It's really true, though, like, like 100% true. <laughs> so now nah, I got a lot of love through, I guess, my hair, but, you know, through, through the, the women. But no, nah, I've never been discriminated because of my skin color, yeah. All day, every day, around where I'm at. Yeah, they, um, you know, you get hit with DWB all the time, driving while black. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you are getting your car searched. You're getting pulled over. Don't matter if you sell drugs, you slang, you in the street. You a brother with a Benz, you a brother with a Beamer. You, you got too much. Like, it, you're getting harassed, let me tell you. You smoke weed, you're getting harassed. You know what I'm saying? Even though it's, like, damn near illegal out there, but... Nah, I've never been discriminated. I've been discriminated for other things, but not my hair, no. And do you keep it cut to a certain point, or are you just growing it out um, from here on out type of thing? I um I started growing my hair, right, to keep it 100 with you. And um, <laughs> I fell asleep one time when a barber was cutting my hair. And this braid right here, all this right here, and all this right here, yo. When I was going to cut my hair. At one point, a barber fell asleep in the chair. And my hair was out, pulled back. He was tapering. This nigga must have tapered way too high because he cut hair and he pushed my shit back. So my immediate reaction was, yo, I'm cutting this shit. But it only took like three or four months or whatever. And I just, my hair grows crazy fast. It was like three, four months. So you fell asleep or the barber fell asleep? No, I fell asleep. I fell asleep, and because if I had seen what the hell he was doing, I'm so on it that getting edged up, getting braided, I'm I'm so I'm, I'm a meticulous person, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, I'm, everything got to look just right and be just right, you know. And uh, so if I had been, I was just tired, you know, running around all day, smoking weed all day, probably ain't slept four in the morning, leaving the studio type of scenario, and you know you know, nodding off, like, you know, and him being like, yo, fam, you gotta wake up. And I think maybe I might have helped contribute it, but I just think him not alerting me and then keeping cutting and acting like everything was good. And I ended up wilding out. Like, I jumped out the chair and I tried fighting him and they called the police and some more shit. And <laughs> and then, you know, I um was like, man, I'm just gonna cut my hair. I kept it and then I grew everything back in and I'm at where I'm at. So I'm just now, I'm just like, you know, I'm still young in my, in my like, mid-20s, so I figure by the time I'm 30, though, I'm not going to have no hair, you know. I'm, I'll probably be regular, low cut, whatever. But while I'm young, I still keep the, you know, everything in. <clears throat> Is there a meaning behind your eyebrows? Um, yeah, uh, usually it used to be three for the stripes. We live by the Adidas stripes back where we at, you know. We, we throw threes, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's what the city stand for. Um, so with me, it's just the people who uh, who died um, that are tatted on my chest. So it's just like, you know, see no, see no fear, no evil type thing. You know, that's what it kind of represents for, for the people that are gone. So what you got going on right now? Right now, we got a project called A and C. It's called Addicted Not Committed. The EP it has a few features on it with Chinks Drugs and the Coke Boys called Coke is Business. Uh, there's a song um, called OD featuring Cassidy. That video is about to release on World Star within the next few months. Um, from that point, uh, we're, we're in uh, Making It Magazine right now, uh, doing, starting our promo tour for the EP. Uh, we're in uh, Hood Illustrated magazine right now, and the Hype magazine comes out in a month. So we're on the cover of that right now as well. Um, basically doing the promo runs for there. We're set in stone for um, an, a second tour after a 45-day tour for the EP doing the promo run and then the tour. Uh, we're set with a second tour with Coast to Coast Company. and. Um, you know, uh, the new the new singles that's premiering uh, would be Stripper Moves, Masterpiece, uh, Bay Bay, 
and um, anything you want. Uh, those are like the next four singles you'll probably hear this summer for the summer vibes and everything that's going on. Uh, you could follow me at Always Getting Cash. You could follow the group at uh, Cash's Biz Music Group. Well, Cash's Biz underscore Music Group. Um, you can follow my producer if you need any beats. Uh, go to Smoky Haze Music at Smoky Haze Music. Um, if you need any features uh, from Innocence, I think it's Miss CIB Brianna Lynn. I think that's her name on Instagram. And um, if you need any videos or editing or anything like that or merchandise, then you would hit up um, at Dancing Machine 88, uh, which is Shells. Yeah, so uh, the EP and then the album and then, you know, my solo mixtape and then the group's solo mixtapes. Uh, right now it's just mine and uh, the R&B singers that we're working on while we're wrapping up this tape right now. Uh, we're going to do major radio, Shade 4-5, um, BET Jams, Revolt TV, Major TV, and... Uh, yeah, so that's that's basically what we're doing for right now, the project.